Hey guys, I'm Fraser and I am a wearables enthusiast. I've had my Aura Ring for four years, uh, my Whoop Strap for two of those, and I've recently bought the first ever longevity focused wearable called Baleo. Back in April 2024, I read an article about a wearable developed by a company called Longer to be used in conjunction with their AI longevity app called the Longevity AI. Baleo is said to be the first wearable that is targeting longevity, where others have focused on fitness, performance, or sleep. I've been wearing it for the last 100 days, and in this video, I give it an in-depth review so you can understand what to expect if you went out and bought one tomorrow. What stood out about the company that developed this is their pledge to deliver $1 billion worth of devices to consumers for free. A model like this will allow them to collect a really rich data set, which I believe can drive longevity insights that in turn benefit everyone who owns one. They don't try to hide their business model, which will ultimately be one of upselling, offering longevity-focused products from within the app. That makes more sense when you visit their website, longer.io, which includes other arms of the company like Longevity Direct for accessing medication online, DNA testing and supplementation through Saints One, and the two products that I'm going to be reviewing, the Longevity AI app and the Blio wearable. The app launched in mid-December 2024 with the Blio device arriving a week later, so I was all ready to go for the new year. The wristband has a simple design following on from products like Whoop where there's no interface and everything happens in the app. It has a USB-C charger and battery life is a strong point with it lasting a full week between charges. Similar to existing wearables on the market, it has sensors to track metrics like sleep, activity, heart rate and HRV. The app is centered around four pillars, exercise, nutrition, sleep and mental health and each pillar is given a daily score, which contributes to your longevity pulse. When opening the app for the first time, you fill out their health check. There are some standard questions about myself alongside lifestyle questions like smoking and drinking, my family history and current medications. It also asked about my health related budget, another nod to their business model of keeping the app free for life by upselling users on longevity products like supplements. The exercise questions included time spent sitting and daily steps, the sort of thing you can imagine correlates with life expectancy and chronic disease risk. You're then presented with a rather funky looking graphic. Based on your initial survey answers, each area is given a baseline percentage, which contributes to your central score, known as your longevity pulse. This view is the first of five tabs, the other four being food, activity, sleep, and mind. It gives me a biological age, which is almost two and a half years below my chronological age, and a summary of my goals, which I can set within the track your progress section. Here I can set a calorie burn, my targets for macronutrients, steps, sleep, and minutes of mindfulness. Each component of the app, from nutrition to exercise, is powered by an AI large language model that has access to the latest longevity research on that topic, so you can think of each coach having its own area of expertise. My first impression was that it's a similar feature to the Whoop Coach, released in the second half of 2023, and more recently the Aura Advisor, uh, but this is a longevity focus offering while the others are geared towards performance and sleep. The Food tab offers the ability to determine the composition of a meal by simply taking a photo of it. I was pretty excited about this, I use the Chronometer app to track my food, and I've always felt there's a better way to do it. As you might expect, its effectiveness varies by the type of food you're photographing. For example, my morning oats have a half scoop of protein powder and a tablespoon of peanut butter, but neither of those are visible by the time I serve it. It's also made with milk, so really out of four ingredients, it's only able to detect one. However, if you give it a fighting chance, it does quite well, though most protein sources seem to be mistaken for chicken, and the macros can be way off. For example, if I have ground beef that's 5% fat, it can't possibly know that, so it might estimate it at 15%. In that sense, it was a backward step for me, having to input the protein, carbohydrate, and fat of each part of my meals. Chronometer allows me to select the food name and portion size and includes vitamin and mineral information, so I'd love to see an integration with calorie tracking apps in future. If you're going from no calorie tracking at all, then a feature like this is certainly a step in the right direction. Within the activity tab, it seems to be picking up steps from the wearable itself. However, more formal activities need to be logged, which is something I'm used to doing from the Aura and prior to that, my Whoop. The difference is that those two wearables had activity detection, where at the end of an exercise, it would suggest a duration and activity type, whereas this app has no such prompts. If you've ever logged activities in a wearable, you know it isn't always straightforward. For my sprint workouts, Whoop had track and field, 
Aura only had other, and for this app, I ended up logging it as a combination of walking and hit. Each activity can be logged with one of three intensities, but it ends up being very subjective whether you think your yoga session was mild, moderate, or extreme. Any calorie burn from exercise is only ever going to be an estimate, and it's not necessarily the exact number that's important, it's that if you have a more active day, it represents it with a higher calorie burn. The sleep tab splits your night into the sleep stages light, REM, and deep sleep, as well as wakeful spells. It splits those into percentages and offers a sleep score out of 100. This is pretty standard practice from wearables these days, and as you'll see later, sleep staging is very much a guessing game, whichever wearable you use. The mind tab requires you to manually log any type of mind-based activity, which includes meditation, being in nature, journaling, and reading. I read non-fiction with the goal of learning rather than purely for pleasure, so I wasn't logging any of that. However, it did encourage me to get consistent with my breathing practice and to experiment with journaling. The tab has health insights as well, offering nighttime heart rate and heart rate variability, as well as oxygen saturation. One feature that's harder to spot is on the bottom menu, and that is programs. These are one to four week courses for learning about a particular topic and might include some interactive elements where you chat to the AI or complete a task and report back. I completed three programs, including a body composition program and learning ways to boost my HRV with daily tasks like measuring my waist and planning out a bedtime routine. I think it's a great feature for upskilling your knowledge of everything that goes into better health and it allows you to take actionable steps towards self-improvement. What is arguably the core feature of the app is access to their AI. To test it out, I gave each coach some general questions about its area of expertise, as well as more specific ones about the data that I've collected in the app. Here are some of the prompts I gave for the food coach and I felt the answers were very well aligned with what I've learned about diet through independent study. Interacting with a large language model seems like the future of personalized nutrition. It's much faster than scouring through health podcasts to find a specific question you want answering, but there's still some uncertainty over how trustworthy the advice is. To avoid positioning itself as the main authority, around half of the answers were followed by a suggestion that I consult with a registered dietitian or other healthcare professional. When it came to the specific questions based on the food I've logged, it unfortunately couldn't access my food log for anything beyond the current day. However, I can tap AI analysis to get feedback on the meals I've eaten that day, which was helpful in identifying my overly high carbohydrate intake from grains. Interacting with the food coach has encouraged me to reduce my portion sizes and introduce more legumes and vegetables. Making incremental changes like this is exactly the sort of value you want from a longevity app. More often than not, logging an entire day's food sees me awarded with 100% on the diet component of my longevity pulse, and partial logging can see it drop below the baseline of 70%, likely because it assumes I've undereaten for that day. With the AI Sleep Coach, there's arguably less personalization than with food because the advice should be more consistent across individuals. Everyone should benefit from behaviors like avoiding blue light before bed, sleeping in a very dark room, and getting sufficient sunlight during the daytime. In that sense, interacting with the AI is on par with reading articles on sleep and experimenting with your own sleep routine to see what works for you. The three-week sleep optimization program includes interacting with the AI to develop bedtime routines alongside reading articles, and that combination has been effective in helping me establish better sleep habits. The exercise coach should be very personalized, but it seemed to rely heavily on my profile information rather than my true exercise history. When prompted, it was able to pull my average daily steps and give me some advice that aligned with my understanding of optimal training. It was able to generate a reasonable 45 minute resistance training program when asked and suggested I log more consistently to get better recommendations. It should be noted that the Blio device is optional and it's entirely possible to connect the Longevity AI app to an existing wearable. However, I was curious about the accuracy of the data and the promise that the Blio would allow me to get the most out of the app. The first problem I encountered is that you can only go back three to five days in the app before it starts telling you that the data doesn't exist. Luckily, I caught this early and was able to start logging my historical data in a spreadsheet in order to compare it to the data from my Aura Ring. Now, I've kept this section brief because they've since upgraded the hardware on the strap and released a Blio Ring, so it will be more of a general discussion about these measurements. Let's start with exercise. Across 100 days, the step counts were very well aligned. 
aura detecting around 10%. More steps could be as simple as unrelated hand movements that are mistaken for steps, which is more likely given that the aura is on my dominant hand. As an example, I've previously had aura suggest that I was doing hours of maximum intensity cardio when all I was doing was scraping wallpaper. In terms of calorie burn, I wasn't immediately in the habit of logging everything in the app, and once I did, I was still seeing higher values from Aura. Again, this could be as simple as differences in the exercise databases they're using. Logging half an hour of the same activity and intensity produces different values depending on the app. When it comes to sleep data, it's well documented that the current algorithms are only ever going to align around 80% to the true values, which is simply a trade-off you have to accept, unless you want to spend every night in a sleep lab. Correlations were quite weak, though some of the absolute values were close. Starting with total sleep, Blio was assigning around 30 minutes more per night, meaning it was closer to representing Aura's total time in bed metric and possibly failing to capture wakeful spells. The total time attributed to light sleep was very similar, but day to day the values have a weak correlation and the same is true for REM sleep. Deep sleep is where there is almost no correlation and Blio is giving me an extra 35 minutes per night. When I was wearing both my Aura and Whoop strap, I compared the sleep stages on those and there was a clear algorithm change from Aura in mid 2023, which brought my deep sleep under 100 minutes a night. I would expect Blio to therefore map closer to Whoop's values, but again, none of these wearables are perfect, so it's about whether they are directionally relevant, meaning a poor night of sleep has lower values and a good night of sleep has higher ones. What remains are the two recovery metrics. Firstly, resting heart rate. Uh, this has a really nice correlation and captures two periods when it was above baseline. Then HRV, which unfortunately is one of the most useful indicators for fitness and recovery, and I believe the Blio is getting this wrong. There can be variations in the way it's reported, but Whoop and Aura had really strong alignment that also tracked well with periods of stress and heavy training, whereas Blio's nightly average seems both overly optimistic and not very responsive to what's happening in my life. I brought up my concerns around HRV accuracy with the company, and they're not sure whether my particular Blio is faulty or if it's part of their known issue with data noise. Touching quickly on my longevity pulse, I started tracking the individual scores after the first month, and I found that wearing my Blio during sleep was enough to get a consistent 100% every day. Most days where I simply logged all my meals saw me hit 100. A consistent 12 to 15 minutes per day of mindful activity would bring my mind score towards 100% which is easier said than done as it's something I struggle to prioritize. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get my activity score higher than 70. The activity seems to be a misunderstanding between active burn and total burn, so it's setting an unrealistic target for the calories I can burn through exercise. Overall, I would say there's so much potential with this app, but it's too early in its development to run around recommending it to people. However, it's free to use, so if you have an existing wearable, it is relatively low effort to download it and give it a try. The AI coach still has room to improve, but that's where I see the most promise. I think we're moving away from sifting through masses of content to find answers to your specific questions to a model where everything is already personalized with you in mind. Think about how much insight you're really getting from these two to three hour health podcasts. Now imagine asking the same questions to someone who knows exactly what you've eaten in the last two weeks, how well you've slept, what exercise you do, and has access to all the latest health science, and the potential is really exciting. One thing I also really appreciate is that they put mind as one of the four core pillars of longevity. It's something often overlooked as part of improving your health, and it's nice to see it given the recognition it deserves. As for the wearable itself, do not underestimate the value in having something free for life. One of the reasons I ultimately stopped wearing my Whoop was the realization that if I kept going another five years, it would cost me over a thousand pounds. These other wearables on the market seem to be under pressure to justify their subscription fees by releasing endless features, most of which, as I mentioned in my detailed Whoop review, are not something I'd willingly pay to use. Looking ahead to the future, I was lucky enough to get a detailed response from the CTO at Longer, answering a few of my questions and outlining what the plan is for the app in the longer term. Firstly, they're fully aware of most of the shortcomings of the app in its current form and have a roadmap to a much better version of the product. In keeping it free for life, they have to be careful of the storage costs of data and they're relying on storing biometric data on the bracelet itself, which is why at a certain point it starts deleting old data. In future, they want to unlock the ability to show trends, which might mean storing daily averages for three to six months. 
They're expecting the development of native text-to-speech, meaning the slightly tedious process of typing out questions to the AI can be replaced by a more seamless conversation. Short term, they're really focused on user experience and they've been very grateful for the feedback that I've delivered since owning the product. Longer term, they can see an integration with lab testing, allowing the AI to derive insights from your blood tests or genetic tests. They're looking at new features that use your phone camera to determine things like biological age, skin health, and blood pressure, which is something I've enjoyed experimenting within other apps. Finally, making sure all of this data is in a format that your doctor will find useful and actionable in helping you improve your health. As I say, I've chosen to jump into a product the second it was released, and with that comes imperfections, but also the opportunity to shape the product going forward, so I'm excited to see what's to come in the rest of the year. Thanks for watching. Thank you.